we actually get into some content. If you can hear me, I want you to make a smiley face on the screen. On Facebook, I want you to put some smiley faces. If you can hear me right, this is take number three, you guys, for the night. Take number three, trying to get this debt to income ratio, trying to get this credit core, credit course out. If you can hear me, put a smiley face on the screen. I need to make sure that everybody here uh, that we're all on court on take number three. This is number third, third time we're trying to get this done. This is what happens when y'all try to be fancy. You know, like we fancy now. This is what happens when you try to be fancy. Uh, yeah, you got to make sure. So, yes, I see smiley faces on the screen, so that's good. Uh, I see smiley faces on the screen, so that's good. All right. Oh, Jesus, it took a minute, boy. So, as we're back in here, you guys, good evening. Mark, good evening, Katrina. Good evening. You guys are coming in. Make sure you guys hit that share button. I know people are confused. Like, what is he doing? I'm messing up. Give me a second. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm human. I mess up. All right. So, uh, what's going on, Miss uh, Miss Williams? Harlan. You know, she got one of them country now. You got to be like, Harlan, get over here, Harlan. <laughs> hey, good, good. Uh, and y'all know Katrina, she just as country as she want to be. And Katrina, I got a chance to look at them pictures. I want everything, everything. I've seen them pictures and them prices. Yeah, I'm going to need each one of those, like every last one of them. All right, you guys, we're going to be talking about debt-to-income ratios on the day. I got a funny spirit on me today, so I'm probably going to be a little silly, uh, especially after having three bloopers uh, in a row. Well, actually, two bloopers in a row. It's our third time, so uh, we're going to see how well it comes across. Let me see who's all on Periscope right quick. Let me play on Facebook real quickly uh, before we move forward. I'll be neglecting my face. Well, that's why I'm neglecting them. They don't ever show me who's online. I cannot see. I cannot see. Uh, I'm up close and personal now. I look far away. All right, so, all right. What's up from St. Louis? How's it doing, man? How's it going? Good to see you. Thank you guys for coming on in here. I appreciate you guys' support. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You guys, what's going on, Nate? I ain't seen you in a minute, Nate. Where you been, man? Uh, guys, real quickly, guys, go ahead and throw that out. We're going to be talking about some really, 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 really important things on today. Um, very, 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 very important things on the day. You do not want to miss this content. Debt to income ratios, what are they? What do they mean? Why do people use them? How, uh, how do lenders look at them? And uh, what do these ratios actually, actually mean? So you guys will please, please, please uh, hit that share button, share this content out. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Am I, am I good? I'm good? Great, thank you, Brittany. All right. So I just know the numbers are really low tonight. What's today? Thursday? Low for Thursday. Usually Wednesday night, Bible study night is a little different. Yeah. So look like people are coming out, going back in. So there must be some issues. I don't know what's going on. The people are going out, coming back in. All right. Harlan's back. Harlan. Harlan's back, y'all. Harlan, you back, girl? Harlan? <laughs> all right. So um, first of all, what is debt to income ratio? You guys, debt to income ratio. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you guys who I was, but I guess if you're in here, you kind of already know who I am. Uh, what is debt to income ratio? You guys, debt to income ratio is simply the ratio where they measure your debt to your income. But more than that, to a lender, it spells R I S K. It spells risk. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Marcia! I know I love me, Miss Miss, 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 Miss Marcia. She's a King's kid, y'all. King, she's got to be working with Facebook and Periscope. I appreciate it. All right. So, um, it actually, debt to income ratio measures risk. All right. Um, everything that, it, when it comes to lending, everything is about measuring risk. Every ratio, every credit report, every tax return, every job stability, every job verification, every letter of explanation is all trying to show the bank that you are a Man, you, you are a managed risk. Everything's about risk. All right. So what we're going to do real quickly is I'm going to take a small commercial break. And when I come back from the small commercial break, uh, we're actually going to, um, yeah, we're going to actually, um, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to get into some content, you guys. We're going to get into some content. So let me go ahead and take this small, 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 small commercial break. We're going to actually do some things to the set while we're gone. 
And uh, you guys, we're trying to get fancy. Like, for real. We're really, I seriously, you know, I know I play a lot, but I'm really trying to take our, our periscopes and our Facebook lives to another level because we're believing God for television. We're going to use this small room. We're going to manage it. Y'all know, y'all remember uh, I did the whole series on uh, your money will only grow to the able to level you're able to manage it. I want to manage this studio to its fullest potential. And so you guys are going to start saying sets change and different backgrounds and all kind of stuff. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And uh, at the same time, it's going to be informative. So, yeah, you fancy now. All right. Matter of fact, I might come back with that song. Like, you fancy now. I'm like, oh, shoot. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Don't everybody get excited. All right. It's boring stuff. We're talking about finances. It's about debt to income ratios. But we can, mm, 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 we can do that too while we're at it. All right. So what we're going to do. We're going to take a small commercial break, and I'll be right back. All right, until then, guys, I'll see you in one second. Hi, my name is Kim Seteth. Yay! From PIP Women Rock, and I came to purchase to profit. You know, I kind of get that mixed up because it's almost like my name. But anyway, listen, listen. This weekend was phenomenal. First of all, I just want to let you all know that if you're coming to this, Note that you won't get any sleep because you're going to be working. I've went to a lot of conferences and I've been to a lot of workshops, but not like this one. I actually had hands on. I had experts. I had teammates. We worked like beep, beep, beep. We worked so hard. Listen, we went on a bus tour. First of all, we was up until I won't tell you because you might get discouraged. But we was up, we had teams, we were working hard, we were working like teammates. That's the key thing. I made some really great friends here for lifetimes, partners in real estate as well. Um, so let's see. So on Friday, we went to dinner, and that was fabulous. But baby, when, fr not that was Thursday, but when Friday came, that was it. We was working, working. We had this fabulous book, which I don't have in my hand. OMG with so much information like really like this is a college course crammed into one weekend it is the bomb.com so if you are out there and you're looking to get into real estate this is definitely the place that you want to be financial freedom university come on by www.myffu.com come on we need you here Hi, my name is Katrina Beverly. I'm a new investor with Financial Freedom University over here in Indiana. And I just want to let you all know that I went to the auction for the first time and I purchased me three properties and I am so excited and I am overwhelmed and ready to get into making this money. I am standing in front of my duplex that I had purchased at the auction for $1,100. And I am so excited to become an Indiana resident because I will be moving over here because I plan on purchasing more. And I am so excited and I would advise you all to get in on this because it is big. Get with Financial Freedom University and he will help you get what you need. All right, you guys, and we are back here live at the studio. Uh, and again, we're excited to be back. We got, made a couple changes, kind of squished it up a little bit on you. But you guys are going to be going to the radio on the, on the board today. As we're on the board today, we're going to be talking about one simple thing, and that's called risk, R-I-S-K. All right, risk, we're talking about measuring risk with the banks, and we're talking about measuring with, with the banks. We're talking about something called D-T-I, which actually stands for debt to income ratio. All right, now, uh, the other day we actually went over your credit reporting. When we talk about your credit reporting, we were looking at the payments that were calculated on uh, that particular, um, on that particular credit report. And I don't know, remember, I think it was uh, Sample, last name was Sample, I think it was Steve Sample and Sharon Sample. Uh, were their name Steve Sample and Sharon Sample? Well, excuse me, in that, and with that being said, Steve Sample had 
some, we're going to make up some stuff, okay, real quickly. We're going to make up some stuff, and we're going to call it, we're going to say that his, we're going to say he has a car, he has a credit card, we're going to say that he has a visa, we're going to say he has a mortgage, and we're going to say, what else do he have? We'll say he has a furniture bill. All right? And he also has a student loan. All right? All right? So, you guys, with these being said, we're just going to do the payment history. And we can actually go into some more stuff on how lenders actually qualify you and how they look at debt to income ratios. Um, but we're not going to do that today. We're actually just going to look at this right here. I'm just going to put a, I'm going to put a category up here called payment. Now, just for sake of confusion, let me go ahead and draw a line here so you guys know that I'm, you know, that's just a title. All right? And then I want to actually draw a line here. And then we're going to draw lines here, here, here. All right. All right. So, you guys, while we got payment here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to, have to measure this out and calculate it. And I'm going to use round numbers only so that we can make it a little easier uh, when it comes to the mental math. Somebody say, mental math. Not mental, mental. You got to call it mental math. You got to do that mental math. And you got to say math with an F. Math. Y'all know how to say math? Math. You got to do that mental math. Or ghetto math. Oh, ghetto math. All right, all right, that's enough. All right, so car payment, right? A few payments. Go ahead and draw that line right there. All right, so car payment, we're going to say car payment is $300 a month. His credit card payments, we're going to say his credit cards are 150 a month. We're going to say Visa is $50 a month. We're going to say his mortgage is $1,000. All right, his furniture bill is 200 And student loans, watch this. Student loans is going to be, can you guys see that? Let me see. All right, so student loans, bring it down some, Brittany. You can't see it. Look, you, look, you can look at the screen here. Uh, student loans are going to be, um, now they can't see down here, student loans. Um, we're going to say student loans is $200. But, watch this. Yeah, that's good. All right, but watch this. Uh, you probably have to just bring it out some so people can see the top. They can't see the risk. Um, but when we start looking at the student loans, you guys, he was able to manage to get a deferment for one year. All right, that's very important. Deferment and how long it is. Still don't got risk on there. Deferment and how long the deferment is is very, very, very important. So we're going to actually get to that as well, too. All right? So when we begin to talk about um, your car, your credit cards, your visa, your mortgage, your furniture, your student loan, all of these are monthly payments. All right? When we begin to look at monthly payments and your monthly income, understand that these, this is what goes into your debt-to-income ratio. Now, if I go over here, I'm actually going to use a different color. Because these things do not go in your debt to income ratio, and people get this confused all the time. Now, the, the quickest way, the simplest way to figure out does it or does it not go into your debt to income ratio is to say things like this. And this is the easiest way to say it is, is it on my credit report? If it's not on your credit report, then the bank don't know about it unless you tell them. And there's some ways that they actually find out and ask probing questions. Like when you pull the money out the bank and they say, what's that for? Well, you put a nice deposit in. Then where'd you get that money from? You say, oh, my mama gave it to me. Did she give it to you or was it a loan? Oh, it was a loan. Okay, what's the payment term? Uh, uh, yeah, got you. You know, so there's different things they do, dead serious, that you want to be aware of and be leery of. All right, so things like this, cell phone, Cell phone is not in that particular ratio, all right? Um, you do things like utilities. Utilities is not in your debt-to-income ratio, okay? You do something like insurance. 
Now, uh, I'll tell you another one that's a really, really good one. They say, George, is this in my um, debt to income ratio? I'm going to tell you, watch this. It's called T.I. And we ain't talking about T.I. the rapper. We're talking about T.I. as in insurance. Or escrow, it will be inside of your debt to income ratio. Not so if you say no escrow, unless you tell them, it will not include your debt to income ratio. All right, now there are some banks that will do a PI, TI, which stands for principal interest tax. Some banks will actually do PIT. All right, you guys. Um, Paris. Testing one, two, three, four. Nope. Can you guys hear me now? Okay. Yeah, it's picking up. So I think the battery went out, you guys. Sorry. Guess next time I'll make sure those are right. If Ms. Marcia was here, she'd probably give me a whooping. She's like, now you know you're supposed to test them batteries before you went live. <laughs> All right. Ms. Marcia, don't beat me. I'm sorry. All right. So, yeah, the batteries that went out. So make sure we discard those. We'll get some more. All right. So you got cell phone, utilities, insurance, taxes, and insurance. What else is not on that people used to always ask me about? Oh, this is a good one, you guys. Association fees. And again, this comes down to underwriter guidelines. Uh, good evening. Uh, this comes down to underwriting guidelines. Uh, sometimes association fees uh, will actually be on there as well. So you got cell phone, utilities, insurance, you got tax and insurance, you have association fees. These are all not included in your debt to income ratio. Those are not included in your debt to income ratio. So as we begin to talk about the things that are, let's go ahead and check it out. So you guys got a car, credit card, if it's on your credit report. So watch this. If you got a car and it ain't on your credit report, they only know if you tell them. So why would you tell them to make your debt to income ratio go up? Why would you tell them in order to make your, make sure you discard those because I'll probably lose them. Um, so don't tell them, only tell them what they ask you. Like dead serious. So this is what they do typically. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm letting y'all know what all lenders do. They'll have you fill out the application, right? And they'll tell you to list your liabilities. Yeah. And then, so you've already given them the liabilities, then they're gonna pull your credit to verify those liabilities. And if you didn't include those liabilities, uh, well, I'm sorry, if, they, if they're not on your credit report, then they're gonna include it in your debt to income ratio. That's one of the ways they do it. So, you know, you can get around that too. I just told you how, all right? So, all right, so you got car, um, 150. You got credit card and visa, I'm sorry. You got credit card and visa, right? There, so I'll call this a MasterCard. And visa, so you got $200. So that gives me $500, that'll be $1,500, so that'll be $1,900. So, wait a minute, wait, hold on, it's not $1,900. Can somebody tell me why it's not $1,900? It would have been, but this right here says student loan, SL, student loan, at $200, but it's deferred for one year. And again, you guys, it comes down to underwriting guidelines, and when I say underwriting guidelines, underwriting guidelines simply just mean this. It means the guidelines that the underwriter must go by. And they have different programs for different guidelines. So you, you might have a guideline like FHA. 
You might have guidelines to fit for conforming. Bank America's guidelines might be different than Chase. Chase is going to be different than Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is going to be different than, you know, a countrywide. So uh, they gone anyway. Countrywide's gone. Bank of America, well, I just said Bank of America. Your bank, all right? Your bank, your lending institution. Um, they're going to have a different guidelines. If you go subprime or prime, which is subprime is those people that got risky credit. FHA is like, you still might have some risky credit. Uh, VA, you know, is different guidelines. Like everybody has different guidelines. But typically, if you're going to be deferred for six months or longer, it will not go into your debt to income ratio for student loans. They're going to want something in writing from the student loan company saying that they want you to get it. We're going to talk about also when it comes to income, we're going to talk about disability income, social security income, temporary disability, you know, when it's not permanent disability, like how long can I count it? If your children are getting checks, and they're 17, can I still get, are they still calculating my debt to income ratio? Like these are all questions that you wanna know, right? So that you know if you're gonna qualify for a loan before they actually start even seeing it. Or you know what to tell them or not tell them. <laughs> when y'all know the rules, you know how to work the game. That's all I can tell you. When you know the rules, somebody say, when I know the rules, I can work the game, all right? Uh, foster care income helps, yes, yes. But I'll tell you something else, when it comes to foster care income, well, we'll get there when we talk about income. Just bring that back up again with the foster care income. All right. So um, check it out. So we're going back to the board. So when we get to the board, you guys can see. Dobie came over here and just sat down, y'all. Get over here and you guys can see here that we're going to say total. Since he is deferred for one year, we can actually kind of cross that out because he don't have to be included because it's been deferred for a year. So we got 300. 150 and 50, that makes 500, plus 1,000 is 1,500, plus furniture makes 1,700. So I have a total of $1,700, all right? Now, um, let's go, I'm gonna erase what's not included, okay? I'm gonna erase what's not included, and then we're gonna actually go to income. But before I go to income, you guys, I have to take a small commercial break, and I'll be right back, all right? So give me one second, you guys, as we go to a small, 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 small commercial break. I'll be right back. Hi, my name's Katrina Beverly. I'm a new investor with Financial Freedom University over here in Indiana. And I just want to let you all know that I went to the auction for the first time and I purchased me three properties and I am so excited and I am overwhelmed and ready to get into making this money. I am standing in front of my duplex that I had purchased at the auction for $1,100 and I am so excited to become an Indiana resident because I will be moving over here because I plan on purchasing more and I am so excited and I would advise you all to get in on this because it is big. Get with Financial Freedom University and he will help you get what you need. All right, you guys, and we're back. Thank you guys for staying here. Guys, if you have not registered for the 2018 Purchase the Profit Conference uh, that Katrina was a part of, you want to make sure you guys are registering for that now. If you want to register for it, go to www.myffu.com. Uh, we have a 50% off flash sale going on right now. At the end of this month, it's going to go away and it's never coming back again, ever, 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 probably until the next conference. But that was going away. So you want to make sure that you actually take advantage of it and you can put it on layaway. Somebody say, what? Yes, you can put it on layaway. Yeah, so you guys can lay that thing off, pay it for, I think you got five months to make payments on that thing. Yeah, on that, on that not make payments on the conference. No, make, pay, make payments on that thing. All right, so. <laughs> y'all know y'all got to look at it on y'all. Be quiet, I don't want to hear it. All right, so. Go ahead, myffu.com forward slash um, P2P conference, or just go there to the homepage. You guys can click on it, and it'll take you there. You guys got to the end of the month, or while supplies last. Either way, it goes. You better take advantage of it right now. That's what Katrina did. Y'all see that house? She got not one, not two, but three of them at the last uh, auction. Boom! And that's just her. Uh, we got some more for you by the end of the show. All right? So... All right, so now we're gonna talk about something called income, you guys. So I'm gonna do income in green. Brittany, you took the, 
You took the green marker? Oh, everybody on the floor? All right. All right. So, bam. You see, Brittany took the green marker, y'all. She be hating on me. She be jealous. All right. So we're going to do income right here, right? I hope this is not too light. Can you guys see this? All right. So when we talk about income, you guys, the first thing I want you guys to notice is that he does, they do gross income. That's before taxes. That's before child support. Not before. Before. Y'all know how to pronounce that? But before. Before. Not before. Not before. Before. All right? So when you say gross income, that's before taxes, before child support, that's before garnishments, that's before insurance, that's before Social Security, that's before 401k, before they take out for your daycare, before all those different stuff that you see on your check, and you be like, man, where my money go? Before all that. Gross income. All right? So they use your gross income to actually calculate your debt to income ratio, which I think is 100% wrong, but hey, who am I? I don't make the rules, right? So when you say gross income, I wanna say job. I wanna say social security. And then I wanna say, um, I wanna say, I think somebody else said foster care earlier. All right, so we're gonna say foster care. So we got on here, we got job, we got income, we got job, we got Social Security, and I just put SS, and we're going to put I behind it. All right? We're going to put foster care. All right? So uh, when we start looking at this, you start saying your job. His job, let's say that he's W-2, oh, God, it's a totally different thing if you're self-employed. If you are self-employed, they want six months P&Ls, they're going to take your P&L. It's, it's a major or profit and loss. Totally different if you're self-employed. This is only if you're W-2. All right? We're not going to get into the self-employed thing today. Just that's our whole course by itself. All right. So, all right. So when you get over here into your job thing, bump up, boop, boop. All right. So you got your job, right? So when we get into the job, you say uh, your job income. Let's say he makes twenty-five hundred, not twenty-five hundred dollars. Twenty-five hundred. Y'all got to understand how to make these words right. Twenty-five hundred. Somebody spell hundred, and I want you spell it in the chat right now. Spell hundred, not hundred. If you spell hundred, we're gonna kick you out. Hundred, spell hundred. I want to see how creative you can be. Spell hundred. I wait for it. Y'all, if you put hundred in this chat, Brittany, block them. Block, block them, Brittany. You bet not spell hundred. Hundred. All right. Let's see here. Hundred. <laughs> Boy, they ain't here, boy. They gonna get it, boy. They gonna get it. Let's see. Hundred, hundred. All right, fifteen. Got twenty-five hundred. All right. Then you got Social Security. Social Security gonna be. Um, we well, gonna let's say the Social Security is uh, six fifty. I'm sorry, I messed it up. I said fifty. It's six fifty. Six, not fifty. Six fifty. Yeah, y'all know about that six fifty. Honey, I see y'all. Yeah. So, all right. So Social Security is six fifty. I'm going to make it 550 so we can have some round numbers. All right, we ain't trying to deal with them ones and stuff. So we're going to make it 550. And then we're going to say he gets, he got one child that he takes care of for foster care. And um, that foster care is, we'll say, 400. Four. Four. Not four. Four hundred. Four hundred. Y'all remember the hundred? Now you got to put a four in front of it, all right? So we're going to say four, hundred, bam, right there, all right? So you guys might think that his gross income would be 2,500 plus the 500 makes 3,100 plus the 400. You might think that this is 3,500 worth of uh, gross income. But what you forgot to ask is, watch this, this is all about measuring risk. Right? So the bank says, you want me to give you a 30-year house based on maybe temporary income. So what they want to see is that they want to see is this job over here. Let me see if y'all can get better for the camera. All right? That might be a little better. I don't know. All right, this job over here, that's cool. All right, we're going we to let the job be cool. But this over here, this Social Security, Tell me what is this Social Security for? I'm telling you, that's what they're going to ask. They're going to ask the loan officer. Uh, yeah, can you tell me what's going on with the Social Security? What's Social Security income for? 
And I'm going to say, well, his child receives a check because his, his mother's gone or his father's gone, a special needs, something, right? So they said, okay, um, how old is the child? Somebody tell me, why would the bank want to know how old the child is that's getting Social Security? Y'all better get this. Y'all better catch it. All right? Our foreclosure just came in here, y'all. We tell her all her secrets. We tell her all underwriting secrets today. So, shh. Don't tell her we telling all the secrets. Foreclosure just came in here. What's going on, Dale? Good to see you, girl. We ain't telling nothing about underwriting guidelines and what y'all look for. Nothing like that. We would never do that. We would never talk about, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, to know how long the child would be in the home. That's exactly uh, it stops at a certain age. That's right. That's right. Could it cut him off? No, it's not 21. No, it cuts him off at 18. And Dale is in here. So if I say something wrong, Dale's going to be like, George, stop lying to them. That ain't true. <laughs> All right. So Dale, you check me. Let me know if I say something that's not right. Brittany, let me know if she put me, if she put me on blast. All right. No, no, dead serious. Like Dale, she, remember we talked about them underwriting guidelines? She's the underwriter. Like she the one got like 15 people to talk to. And they're going to all tell you that they talked to her or emailed her, but you can never talk to her. That's her right there. So if y'all really got a question and you need some questions about underwriting guidelines, you need to follow that girl right there. Not, not, that, not, not that lady right there. That girl right there. That, that, that gal right there. That girl right there. One day y'all going to talk like me. One day. But not today. All right. So let's get. <laughs> All right. That girl, that girl right there. All right. So 3500 But let's say this child is 16 and a half. Now, since Dale is in here, um, let's say this child is 16 and a half. So I want Dale to tell me, Dale, how long does a child have to have because I think it's typically two years. They want at least two years that you're going to get this income before they can include it in your income. They'll, based on the underwriting guidelines and the programs you guys have to bank that you're at, um, what is the qualification guidelines to be able to include a child? How long does that child have to continue with that, that particular check uh, at, your, at, your, at what you work for? You ain't got to tell the name of the company. We don't want you giving away trade secrets. We want you to keep your job. All right? But at your particular place where you work at, uh, tell, me, um, tell me how long does the child have to be receiving uh, Social Security in order to include it inside of your debt to income ratio for gross income. All right. But while she's putting it up there, uh, what if it's not permanent? What, what if it's not permanent? So she said, so Dale just said for you guys that are on Facebook, she said, as long as it's permanent income. Now, I can tell you. That if this child is 13, ain't a problem. Let's say the child is 13, it's not a problem. But if she's 16 and a half, if I'm not mistaken, I know, and I've been out the industry now for quite some time, but I know when I was in the industry, it was two years. So if she's 16 and a half, matter of fact, when I was doing modifications, a loop about three, four, five, four, five years ago, when I was doing modifications, it was two years. It's three years. So she said, for now, it's three years. So if this child is 16 and a half, and you have to have it for three years, can you include it in income? And I said two years right here. Dale just said for the, for the, where she is, the job, I put years all messy of stuff up here. Let's go ahead and do a little different. So uh, we're going to say three years qualifying, right? So she's 16 and a half. In three years, she's going to be 19 and a half. So they don't qualify. So while this Social Security income look good, we can include that income. Man, I just lost $550 in gross income. That is huge for a loan officer. That's like, that's like, oh my God. Like, oh my God. Like, are they going to still qualify? And I need them to qualify because I don't work too hard on this loan for it to get to Dale and now she want to deny me because the child is 16 and a half. I don't understand why she just won't let me get paid. But Dale is only doing one thing and she is measuring risk for the lenders. That's her job. They got underwriting guidelines. She is supposed to fulfill those guidelines. All right? So <laughs> that's what she do. All right, so you got uh, job 2500 foster care. We're going to say 40 so $400. Now, foster care, 
If this is your first year doing foster care and you got one kid, you only have him six months, and you can't get a letter from the foster care people saying how long you're going to hide that kid, we probably ain't going to be able to use this either. But if you got two years tax returns that says that you get $400 a month for the last two years tax returns, now we might be able to use that income. Are, are you understanding? I have to be able to prove that you are going to receive this and have been receiving this for a very long time. If I cannot prove this, Dale is going to shut it down. Shut it down. You got to shut it down. Shut it down. No, I'm just playing. That's, we're going to sing saved. You're going to be got to be saved. Can't sing secular music and, and just can't do it. All right. All right. So job 2,500. Let's just say, because we just lost all this money. We don't want to lose this 400 either, right? All right. So we're just going to say, some of y'all like, shut it down. What is that? That's, that's not for millennials. You've got to be over 40 to understand, or 35. Brittany, you know anything about that? Shut them down. Brittany don't know nothing about it either. All right. So you got to be over 37 to know anything about that kind of music right there. Right there, not there, right there. You got to know about, over 37 to know something about that music. <laughs> Somebody said, I know something about it. Y'all don't know nothing about that right there, unless you're 37. All right. All right. So you guys, total gross income right now is $2,900. Now, we figured out the income. We figured out the debt. Let's figure out the ratio. Now, here's, here, here's, the, here's the stumper, right? If the, let's just say this person is refinancing their house. I know it's not a purchase because they already have a mortgage. So let's say it's a refinance. And so they're refinancing the house. Or let's say they're buying another car, but we don't want to go into car underwriting guidelines. I want to go into mortgage. They want to refinance because I want to show you something called some more ratios, all right? So I'm going to roll this old over here, over here, right there. Bam. Y'all see how I did that right there? Boy, yeah. Woo! One day y'all gonna be able to do that right there, boy. Like, oh, you see how this rolled on over, boy. Y'all don't know nothing about that right there. All right, all right. See, boy, y'all ain't know I was from the south, did y'all? Y'all, y'all ain't know. All right. If y'all ain't shared this scope out, make sure you share this scope out. Matter of fact, since I'm feeling pretty good, let's go ahead and um, I think I seen Lorraine in here earlier. Nope, she ain't in here. That's all right. So what, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to a small commercial break. And uh, while I'm at this small commercial break, I want y'all to go to myffu.com and actually buy these tickets to this Purchase the Profit conference. I'll be right back. Hi, my name is Lorraine Sims. I am a graduate of Financial Freedom University. I've got uh, my second tax lien today. I'm super excited. My first one I obtained at an auction. This is my second one at this auction and I'm super excited about it. I actually met my mentor on Periscope of all things. I've always wanted to flip properties and, and do things with real estate and it just was dropped in my lap. So I know it was God given. Um, I'm here to tell you today that this is definitely something that you need to get into. You could buy properties for pennies on the dollar, okay? I just got one for $500 today. The other one I got one for $500. So there's so many properties here, guys, that it's amazing. This is something that could get you financial freedom. You could become a millionaire with this. Take it and run. I love it. I'm shouting out my, I'm a rep from my, from my school. I'm a graduate of Financial Freedom University. Shouting out my mentor, George Howard. He's amazing. Catch his course, and I'll see you guys at the top. We're back. All right, you guys, and we're back here. Guys, if you ain't went and got your tickets yet, you might not be able to get them very soon. So you want to go to myffu.com and grab those particular tickets, all right? Do you need cash on to buy properties? No, no. Well, I tell you, you try to put them on credit card? If you need to put them on credit card, we got a solution for that too. Just call me if you need someone to talk to, all right? That number is 773-816. 3502. I almost forgot the number, y'all. Y'all see me look up. I was like, what is it? 773-816-3502. Brittany put it in the chat. Uh, if you guys are trying to, hey, don't be laughing to me. Don't, don't be laughing because that was serious. I do, I do some stuff on purpose. That wasn't intentional. <laughs> <laughs> don't be that. that, one, that, that you ain't supposed to laugh at that one. 
All right, thanks, Harold. It's 773-816-3502. Call Brittany if you want to put, like, buy property, put it on a credit card. There's a way around it because the county ain't going to let you pay with a credit card. All right, but we can help you with that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and erase this right here for three years. And now, you guys, I want to talk about uh, calculations. All right, so I want to talk about house. Now, and I want to talk about debt. All right, so I want to talk about house and I want to talk about debt. When we talk about house, what lenders are going to call this, they're going to call it a front end ratio. We just, for, for today, for us, for our, for our particular purposes, we're just going to call it um, we're just going to call it house, all right? But what happens with this is that they're going to want to see that you can at least afford the house. Before they touch debt, they just want to see if you can afford the house. So they want this ratio to be between 28 to 36% or, or 36% or lower, lower, uh, lower. Now, the reason it's 28 to 36, because some programs only have a 32%. Some are 31%. Some are 30%. But FHA and all the rest of them, you're looking at like a 36%, right? So the way you figure this is you take your gross income, which over here is $2,900. So you want to take your gross income times 0.36. All right, that's how you guys figure out a percentage if you just take it times 0.36. All right, so if I bring up my calculator here on my computer, we're going to bring up 2,800, not 100, 100 times 0.36. Was it 2,900, 28? It's 2,900, y'all. I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and hit this declare button. Let's do 2,900 times 0.36, and it equals 1044. So they're saying the amount of house that you can buy is $1,444. How much is his mortgage right now? His mortgage is $1,000, so he's still good. He's still good. Like, long as his, now watch this, long as his PI, and if he escrows, then it's gonna be TI, principal interest tax insurance, um, does it not exceed this much, then he's still all right. W one day we're gonna just talk about PITI. Right? Because we got to actually teach you how to accelerate this debt, pay it off, all that kind of stuff. We're just going to talk about how to pay off your mortgage really quick. And guys, we're paying off mortgages, debt, credit cards, student loans, car notes, furniture bills, mama them, baby daddy, baby mama, uncle so, uh, uncle them, everybody you owe, not everybody, everybody you owe money to, we pay them off in seven years or less. Guys, I have yet don't challenge me, because I always win. I've yet to have somebody with a income. Now, don't be calling me. Y'all know y'all ain't got no money, right? If you got a job and you really want to get out of debt, seven years or less, man. Take the course, six steps to six figures. It will set you free every single time. Matter of fact, uh, every, well, anyway, just, just trust me on it. Almost everybody who's partnered with me, we just discovered this, actually been through six steps, six figures which is absolutely amazing. It just tells you that you're changing mindsets. It's, 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 it's a blessing, I can tell you that. It's really a blessing when I actually think about it. All right? You rolling over here. Don't, don't be over there laughing. You're supposed to be entertained. You've got to be, you got to be educated and at the same time in, in a All right? So when we get here, you guys, we've got to go on back over here, right? So you got debt. Your debt, you guys, is what they call a back-end ratio. So you got a front-end ratio for the house, but the debt is a back-end ratio. Now, the back-end ratio is going to include the house, but it's also going to include all of the other debt that's over here. So all this debt over here plus the house, they're going to include in your debt and your back-end ratio. All right? So we're going to say they want this. Now, this is where it kind of gets funny. Between 42 and 50%. You guys, it used to be 36%. 
It, it used to be 30, it literally, conforming guidelines said 36% when I first started doing loans, like back in 96. The first time I started doing loans, like back in 96, you guys, this ratio was 36% for, for back end ratio. Somebody tell me why you think they raised it from 36 to 42 to 50 percent. Like seriously, I, I really want it. That's a real serious question. Why do you think they went up from 36 percent to 50, 42 to 50 percent for guidelines? I'll wait on that answer because this is really, really serious. And Dale just came back. Dale, for your back end ratios, uh, what are uh, your your link? Not, don't tell me the bank you work for, but your back end ratios. What are your guidelines for your back end ratio? Um, and I guess it depends on the program. We just say your FHA, your FHA guidelines, because I know it depends on the program. Uh, see, another thing y'all don't understand, whether you're doing modifications, guys, they got, when, it, when you're trying to get modified, they got like 15 different programs they're trying to qualify. See, you think you're just going to get making homes affordable. No, it's called a waterfall. They're going to, you're going to fall or tear scale down. Uh, so could you buy a more expensive house? and they can make more money. Yes, that's their job. The reason they tell you that you can afford this much house is because they want you to go buy that much house. Your realtor wants you to buy that much house, your loan officer wants you to buy that much house, and the bank wants you to buy that much house. So yes, they want you to spend every nickel of it because the bigger the loan, the more money the, the bank make, the more money the realtor make, and the more money the loan officer make, and the broker you are. So nobody's in your corner but me. I'm the one over there in the corner tomorrow. Don't do it. No, don't do it. Y'all like, man, did you see that house? Man, I can put my mom and them in there when they come over for Christmas. Man, we can throw some parties in the backyard. Man, they got a bar in the basement. Dude, did you? Man, I'm going to get another job just so I can do it. And you go do it. And that thing you thought was going to be a blessing came out to be a burden. And you make good money, but now your house poor. Don't do it. Somebody say, don't do it. You got to say it real soft so they can hear you. Don't do it. All right. <laughs> don't go to the light, Carolyn. No. <laughs> they going to be like, man, when my boys see this on Monday Night Football, man, we going to turn up. When they see you in bankruptcy court, they going to be like, ah. <laughs> We've been trying to figure out how G been doing it. He broke. Don't do it. I'm telling you. Don't do it. I'm telling y'all. All right. Back end ratio, 42 to 50 percent, right? All right. So when you start looking at the 42 to 50 percent, we're gonna do the same income, 2,900. And I'm sorry, Dale. Did you ever give me what the back end ratio for FHA is for you guys? Dale, give me the back end ratio for FHA. I'm gonna use her numbers. FHA back end ratio if you know them off the top of your head. All right, so if we just say 50%, you guys, um, 55%? I got right, messed up. I can't even push the right button. I'm over here like, 55%? You got to be kidding. Hold on. Y'all, let's compensate. Did she just say 55%? Maybe, hold on, maybe. Y'all, that's ridiculous. That is absolutely crazy. 55, not 55, 55%? You guys, what I'm trying to tell, let me get a little closer to this. I want you guys to see this right quick. What's she telling you? Y'all, boy, I look like a shadow. I'm so dark. I'm, okay, just zoom in on me. Boy, I'm so dark. I Y'all see that shadow? Boy, I look like a shadow. Let me get in front of this light right here. Hold on. I got to put the light up. Hold on. All right. <laughs> Boy, I look like, I still look like a shadow. Hold on. Can somebody get me some light in here? This thing ain't, it ain't working. Okay, there we go. All right, give, give me. All right, I got the light. All right. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> All right, they're dead serious, dead serious, dead serious, all right, dead serious. You guys, they're trying to keep you in debt. It was 31.45, but 55 was an exception. All right, so 
Front end ratio, you guys. Remember we said 36? They said 31, 45, and 55 with an exception. All right, exception. So your front end ratio, they wanted 31. We got it at 36. Your back end ratio, you wanted 45, but you can actually get it up to 40, 55 with an exception. All right, thank you, Dale. That's why I love Dale. If y'all ain't following this woman, y'all need to follow her. And Dale, you need to come up with some courses so you can make some money and teach these people too. I ain't the only one who know my stuff. Some other people in here know what they're talking about too. Call me, we'll put you in FFU. You get a course, I'll put you in FFU. All right, so what I'm telling you though, seriously, I had to stop the scope just for this. Like just for this. Lenders keep making higher or more lenient guidelines because America is getting deeper and deeper in debt. If they want to keep making loans, they have to keep increasing the limitations. Like, I'm so serious. When I started in 96, you guys, it was 36%. Dale just told you it's 45, and if you need an exception, they ain't go to 50, they went to 55. Somebody say, five, five, fever, fever. Man, y'all know how many lights I got in here and I still look like I'm, I look like I'm Dark Vader's little brother. Like, <laughs> I got lights here, 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 but well, that's for the screen. All these lights and I still look like Dark Vader's little brother. I gotta put a light like right in the middle because this ain't working for me. It ain't, I look like Dark Vader's little brother. It ain't, it ain't funny. I, I, I look like Webster Snipes', Webster Snipes cousin. Like, <laughs> And I got a black jacket on too. It ain't working. It ain't working. All right. So, all right. So we got twenty nine. We got twenty nine hundred dollars, right? All right. And I'm gonna take this times point five five. All right. So when I take that times point five five, let's see what we come up with. Twenty nine hundred times point five five equals fifteen ninety five equals 1595 this right here says how much debt they can have y'all ever get somebody when y'all was in school who read like that you know i, I was only doing that because i was writing that took me that long to write it out but did y'all when y'all was in school did y'all get some school who used to read like that like how much debt? You'd be like, man, will you just read it, please? They can have. You'd be like, bruh. bruh for, and he got to read a whole paragraph. You'd be sitting there like, the whole paragraph? Like, man, I'm just going to read it for you. They, how much debt they. <laughs> I'm just going to read it for you. I ain't sitting here through all this. Are you serious? Lord, don't call on him no more. They call it like, uh, George, read paragraph two, the whole class be like, oh my God. Yeah, okay, all right, never mind. <laughs> all right, y'all wrong, y'all know y'all wrong, right? Y'all going, uh, matter of fact, on Sunday, y'all need to go lay at the altar because y'all wrong. Y'all should not be talking about people like that. Y'all wrong. Shame on y'all. All right, all right, so you got 1595, right? Now, here's the question. What debt he got? He got seventeen hundred dollars in debt. He got seventeen hundred dollars in debt, and even with the fifty-five hundred dollars, fifteen fifty-five percent exception. Let me go ahead and put the percent up here. Even with the fifty-five percent exception, he's still at fifteen ninety-five for debt. So can he qualify for debt? So watch this. He can have a seven fifty credit score. He can have been on his job for 22 years. He can have, all right, all right, he can have, he's got a 750 credit score. Matter of fact, I'm going to put him at an 800, not 100. He got an 800 credit score. He's been on his job for 22 years. Um, 
um, assets. He said he got mm, he got $150,000 worth of assets. Here's the question I got for you. Does he qualify? He got an 800 credit score, been on the job for 22 years, got $150,000 in assets, but he has, but he has, I'm sorry, has a total of $1,700 in debt. Does he qualify? That's the question I got. Does, does he qualify? Yes or no? I'll wait on that. Dale, you can't, you can't answer this question. You disqualify. This is what you do for a living. Does he qualify? 800 credit score. Y'all know an 800 credit score is like really good. Like some of y'all in 400 is like, what's that what's 800? Nope, nope, nope. Somebody said he do. I see no, no, no. I said, yeah, he do. I'm still waiting. Let's see. Let me go to Facebook and see. Y yes, but less of a house. Hmm. Okay. All right. I see you, loan. Red, Red Song, are you a, are you a loan officer? Are you, in a, are you in the loan industry? See, when you're in the loan industry, you're trying to find a way to get this man a house. Because you did all this work. You did all this work. I need a check. At the end of the day, uh, y'all, I didn't ran all these numbers and did all this paperwork and collected all this stuff and sent it to the process and y'all going to deny him. And y'all, why did, tell me why he got denied. Because if I can include this Social Security income in here, he would have qualified. No, I, I, I want to purchase the house. She said, no, I've been through this too many times. I ain't. <laughs> She's like, I didn't been through this 15 times, Lord. I know exactly what he's saying. All uh, right. If you're black, nope. If no, nope, this is not a black thing right here. I promise you. Now, y'all know, I, I believe that there are some other privileges that some people have. But this one ain't one of them. Like, the guidelines is guidelines. And they, they are. Um, you say, I've been listening to you. Well, thank you, Red Song. All right. Guys. Because his DTI doesn't qualify, then he just short. All right? So because he got a debt-to-income ratio, matter of fact, let's figure out what his debt-to-income ratio is. All right? So I'm going to go over here, and we're going to do one more calculation, right? So let's figure out really what, what is truly, what is his true debt-to-income ratio. All right? So when you guys want to figure out a debt-to-income ratio, you want to actually take his debt, which is, well, how much is his debt? $1,700. And you want to divide that by his income, which is $2,900, and you should get a percentage or a ratio. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. What's up, Angela Ford, Qualities of a Queen? So you got $1,700 divided by $2,900 equals 0.58. So his real debt to income ratio, now you guys know when it's a percentage, you guys gotta take it by 100, right? So his real debt to income ratio is actually 58%. That's really, this, that's his real debt to income ratio. That's what it is, it's really 58%. Now the exception was 55, so he's really a 58. Now, as a loan officer, or for you, most people want to figure out how can I get him qualified. So remember I said this was a refinance? Remember what I said? I said it's a refinance? So I would do something like this. This is what a loan officer would do. A loan officer is going to say, well, over here he has a car and a credit card. Oh, no, I would probably do the furniture bill. He has a car and a furniture bill. Let's say he owes 6000 on the car and 2,000, so, this dog over here, boy, he messing up the whole green screen. It's okay. And 2,000 on this. If I can refinance $8,000 into, into the house, refinancing, so now it's a cash out refi. If I can refinance 8,000, well, what happens? Because I'm paying off these bills, this now comes out of the debt to income ratio. So now I can subtract 500 from this. Watch this. I'm telling y'all, this is how you play with numbers to get you guys qualified. All right? So if I can subtract 500 from there, well, now, instead of 1595, I'm sorry, now instead of 1700, his new is 1200. Well, at 1200, 595, does he qualify now? Bam! He now qualifies. Well, what's his new? Debt to income ratio. We do 1200 
divided by 2,900 was now 41.3%. So now the bank looks at it and says, okay, he has a 41% debt to income ratio. He got an 800 score, been a job 22 years, $150 an asset. Is he a manageable risk? Will we take a risk on him? And the answer is, yeah, they will. They will now. But before they would not, because, not because his credit wasn't good, not because he didn't make good money, not because he can't keep a job, but because he was in too much debt. You guys, there's another credit hack right here from Financial Freedom University. My name is George Howard. Thank you guys so much for standing in with me. Thank you for putting up with all the technical difficulties we had in the new studio. I'm so elated. Wait, hold on. Let me see what it looked like here. I know I'm crazy, right? Boom! I'm so elated that you guys decided, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> Let me quit. All right. I'm so elated. My first house better reduce the price, but the real estate reduce that. Yeah, they know how to get you closing. And I guarantee you, I like that real estate agent because most time they go to the loan officer and be like, hey, can you reduce your fee? And me as a loan officer says, yeah, if you reduce yours. Because they ask you to reduce your fee, but they don't ever want to reduce theirs. So I'm saying, yeah, I'll reduce mine if you reduce yours. I'll match what you match. But don't come to me asking me to reduce my fee. And you ain't going to reduce yours. That's crazy. Only person giving up money is me. Mm -mm. Not happening. All right. So anyway, you guys, that's debt to income ratio. I hope you guys understand it. I'll do a slight Q&A real quickly because I know I could not get your questions during the live event because I was up teaching. So I will do a slight um, Q&A real quickly. You guys go ahead and shoot. Let me know what's on your mind, what's on your heart. All right, well, since y'all got no questions, we're going to play another commercial, and then I'm about to come right back with closing remarks. All right? Give me a couple seconds, and I'll be right back. Hi, my name is Kim Sutter. Yay! From PIP Women Rock, and I came to purchase to profit. You know, I kind of get that mixed up because it's almost like my name. But anyway, listen, listen. This weekend was phenomenal. First of all, I just want to let you all know that if you're coming to this, note that you won't get any sleep because you're going to be working. I've went to a lot of conferences and I've been to a lot of workshops, but not like this one. I actually had hands on. I had experts. I had teammates. We worked like Beep, beep, beep. We worked so hard. Listen, we went on a bus tour. First of all, we was up until, I won't tell you, because you might get discouraged. But we was up. We had teams. We were working hard. We were working like teammates. That's the key thing. I made some really great friends here for lifetimes, partners in real estate as well. Um, so let's see. So on Friday, we went to dinner, and that was fabulous. But baby, when, fr not that was Thursday, but when Friday came, that was it. We was working, working. We had this fabulous book, which I don't have in my hand, OMG, with so much information. Like, really, like, this is a college course crammed into one weekend. It is the bomb.com. So if you are out there and you're looking to get into real estate, this is definitely the place that you want to be. Financial Freedom University. Come on by. www myffu.com. Come on, we need you here. Hi, my name is Katrina Beverly. I'm a new investor with Financial Freedom University over here in Indiana. And I just want to let you all know that I went to the auction for the first time and I purchased me three properties and I am so excited and I am overwhelmed and ready to get into making this money. I am standing in front of my duplex that I had, purchased at the auction for $1,100, 
and I am so excited to become an Indiana resident because I will be moving over here because I plan on purchasing more and I am so excited and I would advise you all to get in on this because it is big. Get with Financial Freedom University and he will help you get what you need. Hi, my name is Katrina Beverly. I'm a new investor. Hi, my name is Lorraine Sims. I am a graduate of Financial Freedom University. I've got uh, my second tax lien today. I'm super excited. My first one I obtained at an auction. This is my second one at this auction, and I'm super excited about it. I actually met my mentor on Periscope of all things. I've always wanted to flip properties and, and do things with real estate and it just was dropped in my lap. So I know it was God given. Um, I'm here to tell you today that this is definitely something that you need to get into. You could buy properties for pennies on the dollar. Okay, I just got one for $500 today. The other one I got one for $500. So there's so many properties here guys that it's amazing. This is something that could get you financial freedom. You could become a millionaire with this. Take it and run. I love it. I'm shouting out my, I'm a rep from my, from my school. I'm a graduate of Financial Freedom University. Shouting out my mentor, George Howard. He's amazing. Catch his course, and I'll see you guys at the top. All right, you guys, we're back here live at Financial Freedom University. Thank you guys so much for staying with us. We'll do some closing remarks. I did see two questions that come across the line uh, while we were at commercial break. I do want to take time to answer both of them. One was the, yes, you can buy property where we are. I got partners from, I got three, I have three partners from Texas right now who are buying property exactly where I am. I got one family owns two, another one owns, actually flipped one and just bought another one. And then Lady Drea actually bought one as well. So, yeah, hey, that's they're all from the state of Texas. Is anybody else from Texas? We got people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where's Ms. Marble from? She's from Florida, ain't she? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, we, yes, you can. Um, somebody said, do I teach how to just buy properties or teach how to flip? I teach how to do everything. <clears throat> whether you want to flip, whether you want to do owner finance, which means you want to become the bank, whether you want to buy it, we teach you how to do the rehab. We teach you how to deal with contractors. We teach you how to estimate your rehab. We teach you how to do all of that. Uh, what does it mean when you say flip a home? That means that you buy the property, you do some rehab on it, and you immediately turn around and sell it. If you keep it for more than a year, it's not considered a flip. If you sell it within less than 12 months, it's considered a flip. I want to buy property sell from you guys from TV, but I can tell you this. If you buy the ones from TV, not only are you going to get less of what we you're going to get less than what we're going to give you. You're going to pay a lot more money. My conference is $2,500. Their conference is $30,000. And we give you more than what they give you. I give you literally, and I'm not, I'm not being facetious. I give you more than what they give you, and I charge you a whole lot less money. I, some of the people that actually facilitate, help facilitate our seminar teach in their conferences. Like, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm dead serious. They facilitate, they teach at their conferences. Because y'all know, they, you never get them. Unless you're buying that $40,000 package, and then they'll make a guest appearance, but they still, other people are going to be teaching you guys. Well, they're teaching my conferences too. And they, they're blown away that how much, uh, they, how much we give away for the value that we do. It's absolutely, I had one guy says, George, I pay, and this is, I'm as good as truth. Uh, he was from California. He said, George, I paid $5,000 for a home study course. He, says, you're, he said, you don't know your value. He said, you don't know your worth, is what he said. He said, George, I don't think you know your worth. He says, I paid $5,000 for a home study course on taxing certificates, and your content is amazing. I came back and I answered him like this. I said, I know my worth, but I also know where my people at. And I know my people can't afford a $5,000 home study course. I know my people can't afford a $30,000 or a $40,000 seminar. So in order to, to help those who are at the bottom, I have to lower my prices and watch God give me the increase as a result. I get my increase from God. How do you think I went to an auction and out of 30 properties, only two redeemed? So I got 28 out of 30 properties. How'd that happen? Because God brought my increase. 
He sees what I'm doing with my conferences. He sees what I do with my courses. He sees the dedication that I have with my teaching, and he always makes sure that I get my increase. So I continue to be faithful to him and his people, and he continues to be faithful to me. Find a way. Put it on Lailway. It's on Lailway. Put it on Lailway. All right. Somebody else said, is there a certain time to get the property in good condition? That depends on the city that you're in because city codes will enforce. So they got to come around. Um, they come around. If they got to come around, cut your grass. They're going to put a weed lien against it, which means now you got to pay the city off before you can sell it and all that kind of stuff. Um, you have to do uh, really that's really about it. Weed liens. Um, as long or, well, in some areas, if you don't bring it back up, it's like if it's in, 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 inhabitable, um, they'll put you on a demo list and they'll actually knock your house down. Like literally, you'll get like warned and notices and all that kind of stuff. But they're going to bring a bulldozer and they're going to knock down your house if you don't bring it up into, you know, some kind of statue. Other than that, then no. But again, it depends on where you are. Y'all might not have a demo list or a blight list there in your city or state. All right. So any questions from real estate to purchase the profit to uh, courses? You guys, we got a course right now, you guys. Number one, it comes with... Uh, that's because you're taking wealth from the wicked and putting it right in. That's right. What's what I'm supposed to do? I got it, but y'all got to take it. Like, I'm giving it to you, but some of y'all, like, literally, I'm like, here, take it. And some of y'all like, uh-uh, mm-mm, nope, I ain't taking it. Or, well, you know, uh, Beyonce tickets, Jay-Z tickets, Purchase the Profit Conference. I think I'm going to go with them Jay-Z tickets. Priorities in the wrong perspective. <laughs> Y'all already know, right? Carvin like, yep. Carvin came to the conference. Carvin's a homeowner. Just graduated from college. Um, actually, just newly engaged. Homeowner. And Carvin, what city? You in Florida, aren't you? What's Carvin in Florida? I think Carvin's in Florida. 24-year-old young man? 24 years old? Young. But he said, you know what? I'm going to deliver groceries so that I can come to this conference question is what's your excuse yeah he's in Florida question is what's your excuse by right by iPhone or by $500 property guys I just bought a four unit for $500 and it's occupied we went in it was it yesterday Brittany I know but when did we go out looking at it, it was yesterday that's why I didn't come on yesterday last night we were out looking at the properties we just got we went in it yesterday Guys, it's in excellent condition. Like, I cannot be, I mean, it's going to need some work, but I cannot be happier with the conditions of the units. It's in, I'm like, oh, my God. Do you lose the property if you knock it down? And do you still own the land? Yeah, you still own the land. Yeah, you still own the land. Um, that's your last name, Moses? Yeah. Excellent condition. Katrina, I got to show it to you. When you come through, I'm going to take you by there. Yeah, Harold says she took her tax return by her. A $1,600 brick, three bedroom, one bath, living room, dining room, like real living room, dining room, hardwood floors, ceramic tile in the bathroom, full basement. Like, y'all, like, yeah, $1,600. 1600 All right. Uh, okay, y'all, I'm about to go. Uh, your end times preacher well translated. Thank you, sweetie. I'll take it. I'll take that every line. All right. Um, I'm about to go. I'm thinking about coming there up there in December. Come on. Come on, Carvin. Well, you better come see. Oh, thank you, Carvin, for putting that on there. December 1st, you guys. I'm going to put it out here. We don't have it on the website. We haven't announced it. My staff hasn't even started planning it. December 1st, we're having a family reunion. If you have bought a property, we want to take you by your property. Look at Brittany. Y'all should see the look. Brit let me, let me. The look I just got from Brittany Carr. Y'all, she just cut me. What I, she, like she, the look she just gave me was like, what are you talking, like what? Now she know I done brought this up five different times. Harlan, Harlan, do you remember me talking about it? Yeah, I, yeah, we talked about it. We just ain't planned it yet. But yes, I'm going to put it out there. My staff, grab hold, not, not hold, grab hold, get this, and start planning the event. 
December 1st, we go back to court. I think we pick up another 11 properties on December. So we picked up 30 properties in September. We pick up another 11 properties in December. We got a commercial property that's coming out. So it's a total of like 41 properties that we got just in the last, God, the last couple months. And I want all the partners to come back. I want all the people from Six Steps to Six Figures to come back. And we're going to be in the cold Chicagoland area, but we're going to turn up and kick it. December 1st, put it on your calendar. Call Brittany, get details. Not now, they got to iron it out. Call Harold and get details. Not now, they got to put it together. But y'all, we're going to have a 41 property tour that we own. Like, we own them. We own them. We're going to pull up deep. Like, ink, <laughs> ink. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to mess y'all up. It's going to mess you up. See, you get to meet the contracting teams. See them working inside the houses. Y'all get to actually walk inside your houses, feel it, touch it. Don't do it that weekend, my mom's 50th birthday. Oh, Carvin, you gonna miss it. Cause I, I got, we come out of court on the first. But that's okay, man, go to your mom's 50th birthday. Just come, you can come by yourself, spend a little time with me. All right, just come by yourself, all right? Guys, I gotta go. I got contractors in the other room that I gotta take care of. Uh, oh, you remember the con Yeah, December 1st, ain't that the day we go to court? Yeah, okay. December 1st. That's a Friday, right? Yeah, we go to court Friday, December 4th, 4th, 1st. Boom! It's going to be cold. But man, when you start seeing these houses, it's going to warm you up real cool. Guys, get the course. If you guys have not bought my course, Purchase the Profit, it teaches you how to do exactly what I'm doing in every single state, every single city, every single county in America. There's over 3,300 counties. You can do this too in one of them. Or you can come over here and do it with me. It doesn't make a difference. But we want you to actually begin to participate in what we're doing. Make sure you guys do it. The last auction we went to, we spent $30,000 and turned it into over $1 million. That's, we're gonna, we got 28 properties. Those 28 properties will equal about twenty dollars to $24,000 a month income. That's about $300,000 a year, about two hundred dollars to $300,000 a year income that we'll be bringing in every single year. And we still own the property and we only spent $30,000. Just do the math. You've been wondering how you're going to retire. You've been believing God for prosperity. You've been asking God for passive income. God, help me with this business. Um, you can do it in any area, including D.C. God, help me do it. Help me do it. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? You're, they're sitting here listening. You can put it on railway. You can put it on a payment plan. What you waiting on? It's a flash sale that's 50% off. What are you waiting on? What, what are you really waiting on? That's the question I really have for you. When are you going to take... Your destiny into your hands and actually do something different. You got to see the testimonials. I've been on here two years. You see that I'm not a scam. You ain't never heard nothing negative about me. Maybe except that one time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but my ratings are off. This, my ratings are stellar. All I can tell you is y'all want to get in the game. You won't win until you get in the game. All right, you can't, what is it? You can't win if you don't play? Y'all remember that old Lotto commercial said, you can't win if you don't play. No, if you don't play, you can't win. That's what they used to say. Well, that's what I'm telling you. So y'all begin to change your mindset and stop buying. Watch this. If you put up your Christmas, put down that vacation, put up that iPhone you want to get them kids, you can get a house, fix it up, and with the rent of $700 a month, now you can buy the iPhone, and one month income. Now you can do the Christmas, which I hope you don't. And then, oh, I was supposed to be doing holidays from hell. Yeah, okay. And then, after that, you can do the vacation and let the tenant pay for it. And you still got money left. How much sense does that make? Can't score if you don't take shots. I take it. That's all I got to do right there. We're going to go off the air right here. I'll see you guys later. You guys be...